What's up guys? Welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash tales from retail. This story is called The Online Return. I used to work at a retail store that sells everything under the sun and since very recently had a very liberal return policy. One time I took back a Fry Daddy deep fryer that was over two years old, very used and no receipt or proof of purchase from our store. But that is a story for another day. Our tale begins on a Sunday, the busiest day of the week at our store and the day that everything that can go wrong will go wrong. I was the customer service manager at the time and got called to the front because a cashier needed help with the return. Here's the cast. There's me, a very tired customer service manager. Cashier one, manager. Incompetent customer. Hey OP, uh, this customer has an online return. I can't find anything on his receipt besides his membership charge. He says, insert online retail giant here told him to bring the return here. Incompetent customer is visibly upset and is angrily scrolling through his phone to find his email with his receipt. I told her already, I already talked to the customer service and she has to do my return. Okay sir, I am so sorry for the trouble. What are we returning today and uh, can I have your email? I can look up your online purchase with our database. It's this dang comforter set. It's supposed to be gray, but it looks green. I can't believe. Online retail giant sent me the wrong color and you guys don't have it in store i get the customer's email look him up in the system and see that the only online purchase he has made with the company was for our membership program no online orders from us at all i explain this to the customer he tells me that he bought the item from the online retail giant but when he called them to do a return they told him to come to our store now, I know a certain clothing chain has started taking online retail giant returns, but we are not that store. So I asked the customer if he meant he was supposed to go to that store. Nope, he was told to come here. I asked to see the item in question. He pulls it out of a garbage bag. See, I told you it's green, not gray. Now, can you return it already so I can get a different one? Sir, I'm sorry, but we have no record of you buying this from us. Let me see if we carry this item. It's a comforter. Of course you carry it. I'm getting to the end of my rope with this guy. As I try and find a tag on the comforter, he's yelling at me and cashier one about how stupid we are and that if we can't do a simple return, why are we even working here? At this point, manager shows up. There's a line at the front because the customer is refusing to move to the side so cashier one can take the other customers and is being quite loud. Hey OP, what's going on? This customer has a return from online retail giant that they were told to bring here? We don't fulfill for online retail giants. Sir, are you sure you weren't told to go to clothing store? Why are you all so stupid? I was told to come here because this is your comforter and you have to do my return. At this point, I have found the tag on the comforter. The brand is online retail giant basics. Pretty much the online retail giant store brand. Vindication! I'm sorry sir, but the tag on the comforter shows that it is from online retail giant, not us. I cannot do a return for an item from another retailer that we do not carry. What do you mean you won't do my return? I want your manager. Sir, I am the customer service manager, but manager is right here and is another manager. Sir, OP is correct. We can't do this return. You need to call online retail giant about your return. I wish I could say there was a better ending, but that was it. Incompetent customer didn't say a word, just mumbled under his breath and stalked out of the store with his hefty bag of comforter. I did receive an email later that night for a customer complaint, but manager and I had already written out an incident report to alert the other stores in the area in case he tried the same thing somewhere else. So neither of us were written up for violating our store's never say no policy. And that, kids, is how I spent 30 minutes explaining to a man that I couldn't do a return on an item from another store. That dude is, I guess, incompetent. <laughs> you, <laughs> Amazon is really good when it comes to customer service, okay? Especially with their own stuff, Amazon Basics. You can literally say, oh, I never got my item, and they will believe you, especially if it's Amazon basic stuff, because they just don't want to deal with your crap. So if you got the wrong color, they will literally send you a replacement. This story's called, Customer Tried to Steal a Computer and TV in One of the Most Brazen Ways I've Ever Seen. This happened about six years ago at one of America's largest retail chains. 
I was fairly new to retail at this time, still young enough to believe in the good in people. I was monitoring our four self-checkout registers. A woman comes up with a computer and TV in the box. My initial reaction was me thinking why anybody would come over to self-checkout to scan those items, as we didn't have hand scanners at the time over there. You either had to hover the barcode over the scanning plate, or you needed somebody like me to type in the UPC and serial numbers for both items. So I go over and type in the numbers, and all seems well. A few moments later, I see some error message on the screen I'm standing behind that I couldn't interpret. I didn't know what it was saying, I had never seen this before, but it did mention the items were voided off. I thought it might have been a simple void she did, which I always need to approve on self-checkout, which annoyed me because I took the time to type in the UPC and serial for both items, and she suddenly doesn't want them. Turns out she did want the items. I go over to the woman and ask what's up, and she says she didn't know, but she used her credit card and it said the transaction went through. Not likely since no receipt came out. But she mentioned she didn't even need it. For a computer and TV? Are you dumb? She kept insisting the transaction went through. Not knowing what to do, I call a customer service manager over to sort through this problem. The customer tells the customer service manager the same thing, and the customer service manager says she needs to go into the cash office and check the transaction logs for that self-checkout to see if it really went through or not. Keep in mind, throughout all this, the customer is using a, now known but not at the time, technique of acting super busy by repeatedly saying, I'm going to be late to pick up my daughter, which, not knowing that kind of tactic, still made me think, who buys a TV and computer when they are that pressed for time? Manager reiterates she needs to check the transaction logs and she would be back in a few minutes. Customer is annoyed, but the manager walks off to do that. The entire time she's in the cash office, this woman is going on about how it went through, and after a minute, she asks me if she can call her credit card company to see if they say it went through. I didn't confirm. Their response would mean she could up and leave, but I said she is free to do so. So she takes out her phone, calls a number, and without even being asked any identifying information, gets a rep on the line in record time. She tells me the rep says it went through and asks me if I'd like to speak to them. Not wanting to get involved with her personal financial stuff, I declined to take the phone in one of the biggest regrets of my life because I'd kill to see what they would say on the other line as it clearly was not a credit card company. She hangs up and now keeps on going. They said it was fine. Can I go? And I state not until the manager gets back. So, after what seems like an eternity of listening to this woman go on and on about needing to pick up her daughter, calling her credit card company, asking if she's good to go, etc., my manager comes out. She explains there was no transaction in the log of her purchase and asks to see her card. It didn't go through because it's expired, see? And points. The customer, realizing they were truly defeated, angrily mumbles something like, Fine, I guess I won't be buying these things today. Which, of course, was no problem for us and storms off, leaving us baffled. Okay, that was a ridiculous attempt at thievery. Let me know in the comments below any ridiculous stories you might have where someone's trying to steal something in a way that was really stupid or something. I don't know. I'm curious. Let me know. Go crazy. This story's called Triple Ban on an Ancient Evil. I have worked for Midwestern-based superstore slash big box store. I have worked for this company for the better part of 20 years and have put up with a lot, but I'm stubborn and like getting paid, so yeah. At my particular store, we have an infamous customer that was banned from our store over 10 years ago for causing problems. Arguing with team members, yelling at customers, and being a high volume returner. She'd been known to take frozen foods and stash them in fashions or leave meats in the yarn slash fabric sections, etc. You know real upstanding things. Part of her entitlement came from one of our managers dating her son and let her get away with anything. As the years passed, everyone knew I had stories about this woman. If you have heard of the classic Karens, I think this lady was the origin of the species who I will call Primordial Karen. When I train new people, I always make sure to mention her, describing her as around 500 years old, smoking 20 packs a day, and having a deeper voice than I do. 
I've had phone transactions with her where I've called her sir the entire time because I could not tell it was this particular customer until she would get mad and say, You know this is primordial Karen, right? My response? I'm sorry, sir, I did not. Well, as I said in the title, this is a historic triple ban, so I may as well get on with it. Ban 1. The aforementioned arguing assault returns in the thousands and being a general Uber Karen. I do not normally work the service desk, but I do occasionally have to grab returns to shop back, and as I was approaching the desk, I see Primordial Karen, the service team leaders, store director, and interestingly, the county sheriff's deputies. I happen to hear Primordial Karen cussing at our service team leader and, surprisingly, the manager swearing back at her with F-bombs and all that. Never seen that from management before. On the floor, even. As I had only worked there for a few years at that point, and being only in my mid-twenties, I was unaccustomed to this, as I was a polite young man and my parents were strict about profanity. I have since grown up. I hear the store director say, Primordial Karen, we don't need you as a customer. You are going to leave the store and you are being banned from our location. You are being denied service. You cannot buy what is in your cart because you will just try and return it later, and I don't want to deal with you anymore. Primordial Karen is even more angry at this point, but the store director points at the deputy and says if she didn't leave, she would be removed. She left. I should also mention that the manager that was dating Primordial Karen's son had been fired not too long before this for theft, and we were not going to put up with it anymore. Ban 2. Some time goes by and all is well, but suddenly, a disturbance in the force. Different departments keep getting calls from some angry old guy, and because I had been there for about five years and trained most of the other team members, they all start approaching me with similar stories. I start putting two and two together and come up with Primordial Karen hitting on some new scheme to get around her ban. She was calling into the store to find someone who would shop for her, way before personal shopping apps existed, and then send someone into the store to pick up her order. This is when I get the call when I call her sir, as mentioned above. I find out she has been parking in our parking lot and harassing our customers and asking them to shop for her. Finally, I hear she convinced one of our fashion slash baby team to buy her some products using the team member's own money, then deliver it to Primordial Karen's house. Talking to the team member later, I found out that Primordial Karen didn't even pay her back for the purchase. All of this is reported to the management and a memo is passed around that if we get calls from Primordial Karen, to forward them to our store director. I find out that the store director had seen Primordial Karen in the parking lot and banned her not only from our property, but from the entire company, and that she will be arrested for trespassing if she is caught again. Ban 3 As of today, it has been about 12 years since my first interaction with Primordial Karen, and we still get calls from time to time. For some reason, senility I assume, she's probably pushing 600 by now, she has been calling every few hours looking for a shark vacuum and a cure coffee maker. I call my manager and inform them that Primordial Karen seems to still be living, or at least some unholy undead of some kind, and is calling. I tell him that I just had to hang up on her because she started cussing at me within 30 seconds of answering the department phone. Bosses say they are aware and I'm not the first to report her today. Apparently she started calling yesterday. Nothing we can do. Or so I thought. I guess Primordial Karen got fed up with getting hung up on, so she called our corporate helpline. I feel sorry for the operator that dealt with her, and demanded she be connected to the store. The operator sounded frazzled when I answered the phone, because I do not work in the department she was trying to direct to. I told her we had a service rush and I was the only team member on the floor and I would try and help. The operator says she has a really rude lady on the phone asking for a Keurig and a shark vacuum. Frick! I tell the operator I have dealt with this customer three times this morning, and others have too. She's banned, blah blah blah. The operator, to my surprise, says, Oh, thank God. I'll talk to my supervisor and have this number listed on our ban list. We may have to talk to your store director, but we'll take care of this. My dumbfounded response? You can do that? I've been dealing with her for 12 years. The operator says, Yes, and it looks like the customer hung up during our conversation anyway, so have a nice day. Okay, it's gotta be very, very annoying to have to deal with people like that. 
Like honestly, couldn't you count that as harassment and press charges? Because I mean, at that point, you know, for that long, I'd do that. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.